What is the story of sacred scripture? Who better to tell it than EWTN's own resident expert, Father Mitch Pacwa? Is there anything in the tradition that is not found in the scripture? And I said, yes. The table of contents. No book of the Bible writes down which books belong in the Bible. You only know it from the oral tradition from the apostles. Well, good afternoon, and thank you for tuning in on this beautiful Saturday to the KTH 910 AM Interview of the Week, broadcasting across Dallas-Fort Worth here on this beautiful station. And I'm excited because one week from today, I am going to be emceeing an event that I have uh, never missed. It's called the North Texas Catholic Men's Conference, and uh, gosh, for eight or I think eight years now, they have been bringing in outstanding speakers, strengthening men. And so it's going to be next Saturday, February 23rd. It's at St. Patrick's Catholic Church in Dallas, the parish I grew up in. Uh, And it's going to be from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And all men 18 and over, Catholic, you don't even have to be Catholic, but we want all men to participate. Uh, The website is ntxcmc.org to buy your tickets, ntxcmc.org. They do go up the day of, so get them early. The speakers will be Father Mitch Pacwa, who you know, you've heard and seen on EWTN and uh, and Guadalupe Radio, of course. Also Patrick Coffin with Patrick Coffin Media and Bishop Edward Burns, uh, the Bishop of the Diocese of Dallas. Uh, The theme of the event is Strengthen Your Brother, Stand Firm in Christ. And I just happen to have Father Mitch Pacwa on the line with me. I presume he's in Alabama at home, but he's coming here next week. Uh, Father Mitch, how you doing? Yes, I am in Alabama, and I'm doing well. And you're not hunting I'm at the moment, well. are you? Is this? Uh... Uh, I did that last weekend. <laughs> okay. Uh, so tell us, uh, be- before we get into the specifics of this event, and uh, like I said, I just want to encourage all the guys, if it's this late and you haven't registered, you know, you got to do it because uh, th- th- this event is going to be about beneficial to all men in so many ways. Before that, though, Father, the, the state of the Church right now uh, as men, you know, we're all kind of products of the, the environment we live in. This is a difficult, challenging time uh, for the Church. And how would you kind of, you know, summarize what it's like to be a Catholic man or a Catholic woman, for that matter, in 2019? What's, what's your assessment of, our, of the, the, the state of the Church? Yeah, a couple things that we have to pay attention to. The culture is going through a lot of significant changes. Uh, One of the most, probably the most profound change is that we no longer have confidence that we can know what's true and what is false. Mm -hmm. We, and so we, we have a relativistic culture in many ways. And, you know, this applies to lots of moral issues. Um, this, you know, once you start off with that basic issue, then you move on to other concerns uh, that flow from it. For instance, as a result, you have a lot of institutions, uh, the schools, and in many cases, people in the church who are nervous about giving facts and information. And so in a democracy like ours, you have a lot of people who are dumbing down. They know less and less, not only about Catholic truth, but also about you know, American history, American values, American law and the Constitution, these all get very much neglected. And that is itself an extraordinarily dangerous situation because you have to have a well-informed population in order for democracy to work. Mm Mm-hmm. It does not work well when the people are ignorant of the principles of democracy. That is key. Yes. Uh, In the faith, 
you have a lot of people who don't know how to deal with questions in regard to um, what Catholics actually hold and what is right and wrong. Uh, we don't know what the church teaches, and uh, there is also a certain kind of distrust of the church. Mm -hmm. Now, let's add one other element, uh, because uh, to get at why the church is distrusted, but also why this affects so many others. You have, with that uh, relativism, that not knowing of truth, you have people then very willing to follow their impulses. And in the present, well, for the last 50 years, it has been a willingness to follow their sexual impulses. Mm -hmm. And so we've seen a horrendous change of sexual morality. Yes. And that applies to... Uh, the church as well. Um, you know, we have gone, for instance, uh, in society in general, as probably the the most significant change in sexual and therefore family morality that uh, when I was born in the late 1940s, I'm a baby boom kid, um, the uh, number of, or the percentage of people who were born out of wedlock was the same as it had been for most of U.S. history, about 4%. Since then, it has gone up to 52% of mm. all children being born out of wedlock. Their parents are not married. And this is the number one indicator of poverty in our society, not race. Yes. Uh, uh, but po uh, it's out of wedlock birth. And as a result, you've got a lot of folks uh, who also are, they're also the, the most likely group not to finish school, uh, to start using drugs, and to end up in the prison system. Uh, that, that That's just reality I, I didn't it's not pleasant but it's reality yes then you see inside the church that there is a sex abuse scandal that has taken place and it's in part because so many clergy are part of the same culture mentality this is uh, the the way that Americans Think. And not only Americans, because it's also a reality in other countries. Family breakdown is global. And so um, this is a very important issue. And it not only means that folks inside the church, and not only the Catholic Church, by the way, uh, this is a, a problem in all the churches. Houston Chronicle just published a, a, a significant article about the same problems existing in the Southern Baptist Convention. Um, uh, and uh, it, it, I guarantee you it's in the other communities as well. Yes. So uh... you've got, got these problems that flow out from general society into the church, and too often people in the church have accepted the cultural norms rather than the norms of the gospel, and this is a major problem. Uh, Father Mitch Paqua joining me. He's going to be one of the speakers next Saturday for the North Texas Catholic Men's Conference. The theme is Strengthen Your Brother, Stand Firm in Christ. Uh, it's going to be at St. Patrick's Catholic Church in Dallas, ntxcmc.org. And opportunities for reconciliation, there's going to be adoration, 
Um, a mass, by the way, at 8 o'clock before the event. Everybody's encouraged to uh, participate in that. And uh, Patrick Coffin and Bishop Edward Burns will be the other speakers. So, you know, as I hear you talk, Father, I know the the, the guys who um, will be at coming next Saturday, they're nodding their heads saying, yes, yes, I totally agree, Father Mitch, there's a problem and there's a lack of trust in our leadership and the church is in a mess and we want to pull ourselves out. And that's why we have things like these conferences how do right. we as individual men, or even corporately, as a group of men, what can we do uh, to, to kind of steer the ship right again? What, what's, what's the solution? Well, this, this is going to be uh, uh, where a couple of issues have to be addressed. First of all, we have to reshift ourselves away from trusting the culture as the basis of truth to looking at other concerns, uh, you know, the gospel. Are we going to believe Jesus Christ or the society when it comes to that? And uh, we have to ask ourselves, how well is the culture doing with all this? Are you happy with the way uh, Kids' lives have been uh, guided uh, a lot. Of, and I don't blame young people for being born to unmarried parents. Uh, they had nothing to do with that. These, and uh, uh, do you like the results that that kind of family uh, breakup has caused? Do you think that's been a good move? Or is there need to make some correctives. And along what line do we make those correctives? I myself would urge people to take a look at the gospel of Christ and see what he teaches us about what is right uh, and good and true. Do we believe that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life? Or are we going to say to the culture, no, we trust you. Mm -hmm. uh, I, th that's a basic concern. Do we have uh, better results by not trusting that truth exists? Has that made us a better society? And on what basis would you say yes or no to that? These are basic questions we need to ask one another. And I would urge uh, the, the men who come to the conference to consider those questions and how we can address them. Uh, I personally... Uh, think that we would do much better. I, I, here's one way I like to put it. If we could get folks in the culture to simply obey a few more of God's commandments, let's start off with thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, and thou shalt not bear false witness. Just start off with those. You know, uh, fairly basic uh, commandments, wouldn't you say? Uh, I think that'd be a good, and, <laughs> very good yeah, start. Yes. And if you, yeah, if you start off there and say, "All right, let's obey those," can you imagine what a difference that would make in society? You could walk the streets of our cities without worrying that you're going to get mugged. That in itself would be a tremendous boon. It sure would. And, uh, it, Father Mitch, let me just know, remind, that, everybody, remind everybody, we're talking about the North Texas Catholic Men's Conference. Uh, Father Mitch Pack was my guest. He's going to be one of the speakers next Saturday at St. Patrick's. We encourage all men, 18 and over, to please attend this. I'm going to be the MC. Bishop Edward Burns is going to speak from the Diocese of Dallas. Patrick Coffin with Patrick Coffin Media is going to be a speaker as well. NTXCMC.org is the website. And Father Mitch, as you're talking about these, you know, do not kill, do not commit adultery, 
uh, you know, these are commandments, uh, and I think also would fall under natural law. And when you look at like what happened in New York recently with uh, Governor Cuomo and the the celebration of the murder of children all the way up to the point of birth and possibly even afterwards, you're thinking, boy, this, these people are, are violating even precepts that should be written on their hearts as natural law. It's not like the church has to tell people <laughs> don't kill babies. That should be imprinted on us. So how, how do we how do we get people back even to the precepts of natural law, which should be natural to them? Well, let's you know this is uh, why it's very much tied in with the culture dumbing us down. Uh, take a look at the reality uh, as a result of that change of law where. People expressed glee over being able to kill more children in the womb. And I always add, by cutting them into pieces. Mm -hmm. That's the reality of what they do. No, let's not play games. uh, This is exactly what they're talking about. So, what uh, we also see is... As a result, a man who murdered his girlfriend and at the same time killed his own baby with whom she was pregnant, uh, that guy is no, no longer culpable for having killed his child because it was in the womb. Mm-hmm. Yeah, had no rights. This is, this is a reality. Uh, so are, are we... Uh, willing to accept that reality as a new normal. Uh, Apparently, they are New York. And then we have to take a look at other realities. In New York City, for instance, 60% of all children are already being aborted. Mm. And that includes 85% of the African American children who get conceived are aborted. Wow, that's amazing. That's easy to figure out, by the way. People say, well, how do you know that? What's well, easy? You figure out, you, you take a look at how many uh, women had abortions from the African American community and how many children were born, and you work out the ratio from there. Very simple. Yeah, yeah, that is just and this uh, is the reality. Uh, Father Mitch, we I only have a few, a few minutes remaining, and uh, I mm-hmm. wanted to just give you an opportunity to, uh, you know, speak through the radio like you do every, every week uh, on, on the radio with Open Line, uh, and just encourage men. Uh, and if women are listening uh, whose husbands they think would benefit from this, uh, what would you say to those people who have not yet signed up to come to this conference next Saturday? You know, my concern is what else do you have going on that is going to be more important than you getting more insight from a variety of other Catholics on how best to uh, improve this society, to become the light of the world, the salt of the earth that Jesus Christ wants you to be. Where uh, what else do you have to do? Uh, some people may have more important things to do. Uh, and and I, I don't say that cynically. Uh, uh, but there are also a lot of folks who need to, to take time to say, I have to stand up. That's what Christ was saying in the gospel passage that is the basis for the conference theme. Uh, I have to stand up and support the brothers. What do I have to do to learn from them and to augment their need for more learning? Uh, That's why we want you all there. All right. Uh, You heard it there from Father Mitch. So, uh, gentlemen, please sign up. I know it's it's always easy to procrastinate, but at this point, even the procrastinators need to get on the ball. Uh, There's probably going to be, you know, anywhere up to a thousand men. Uh, I don't know what the numbers are going to be, seven, eight hundred. A lot of men gathered at St. Patrick's Parish in Dallas next Saturday, the 23rd of February. Bishop Edward Burns, Patrick Coffin, Father Mitch Pacwa. Those are just the speakers, but there's so much else that's going on, including 
adoration of our Lord, opportunities for confession, lunch is going to be included as well, and just the fellowship, being with other men and building each other. You know, iron strengthens iron, and the theme will be strengthen your brothers, stand firm in Christ. Again, St. Patrick's Church, uh, located 9643 Ferndale Road, Dallas, Texas, 75238. Father Joseph Fulmer Koenig, uh, pastor, uh, you, you know him. Uh, Father, you've met Father Joseph, haven't you? I'm not sure I have. You know, I've been gone from uh, Dallas a long time. Yeah, he's German. So not... He's he's actually got uh, I think six or seven kids. He was uh, married, had a bunch of kids, became a deacon. His wife passed away, and then he's been a, a priest. Uh, yeah, yeah, father's uh, a really uh, you you'll like him. He's got a very wry sense of humor, and I know he'll be there along with the bishop. So uh, we're in for a good time. Well, f- father, I appreciate your your time today and taking time out to talk to our our audience about this uh, conference next. It's my pleasure, and as you know, I always look forward to returning to the Republic of Texas. <laughs> and I, I credit anything that I know about the faith, I, I credit to you being one of my previous teachers. Uh, so I, well, thank you. Back Glad in the old days. I've done what I could. <laughs> Father Mitch Pacwa, thanks so much. And uh, Patrick Coffin will be with us, and Bishop Edward Burns as well. Sign up, please, ntxcmc.org. ntxcmc.org is the website to find out about this event uh, next Saturday, February 23rd. And uh, uh, thank you for listening. This has been the KTH 910 AM Interview of the Week here on the Guadalupe Radio Network.